Welcome to Victory. I want to thank you for being a part of our Victory family today. Thank you for watching the program. I'm the senior pastor at Victory in Camden and Victory in El Dorado. We have campus pastors at each one of those. And we just want to thank you for being a part of our audience. Thank you for letting Victory be a part of your family and a part of your life. During the service today, there will be a telephone number at the bottom of your screen. If you would take advantage of it, let us know what's going on in your life. If God is dealing with your heart, if you're rejoicing in your heart, things that we can stand with you and pray with you about, call that number at the bottom of the screen. Let's go right into that service at Victory now. I want to talk to you about the nurturing side of God. And I want to talk to you about the analogy of an eagle in a little bit different way. When an eagle builds a nest, its first ingredients for that nest is thorns. They're usually probably pretty long thorns, uh, the longest thorns possibly they can find. And he begins that nest by developing it with thorns. Then on top of that thorns, he begins to put straw or things that he can find, pretty coarse material. And he began to take that straw and beat it down in, that, in those thorns. Then on top of those thorns and on top of the straw, then he'll begin to place more delicate items like feathers and lightweighted material to where when, it, when it's done, it's an extremely soft bed for his little eaglets to be in. And then the, the little eaglets hatch. And for the first several weeks, there's nothing like the comfort of that nest. Man, all they can feel is that soft uh, feathers underneath it. All they can feel is the softness, the tenderness of that, of that uh, nest. But all of a sudden, that little eaglet begins to grow. And as it begins to grow, it begins to gain weight. Anybody ever feel any problem like that? But that little eaglet begins to gain weight. And what happens is the weight of that eaglet begins to just pick up first the first little pricks of that storm. And although nothing's really hurting it, but it just senses that something's different than the nest had been before. And let me say, that's where a lot of our people are in this church right now. You begin to sense there's a change coming, that God is fixing to bring about change in your life, that God's about getting ready to uh, open the doors and do some things wonderful in your life. And so you can just begin to barely pick up the little pricks of that. But then time goes on. And then the little eagle, it gets older, and as it gets older, then all of a sudden, its weight of its body pushes hard through that, even that second layer of straw, and now the thorns have become extremely uncomfortable. In fact, the little eaglet at this point can find no comfort in its nest. I'm going to tell you what, God is making things uncomfortable in your life because God is fixing to change your life for the glory of God. You've got to read the season right. It's so important to know that God is doing things. And even though it seems un, doesn't seem to be God, I'm going to tell you what. God has a way of masquerading things just like thorns in the midst of a nest. God has a way of masquerading things in our life. But really, we find out that it was really God all the time at work. And so then the weight of that begins. And so there's no longer comfort in that nest. And so that little eaglet then climbs up to the side of that nest because it can't find any comfort in, its, uh, in the bottom of it anymore. So that little eaglet finds itself in a very hard place because it can't stand all the time. And it certainly can't stand on because standing on the side of that nest, which that nest has usually been built up on a cleft of a high mountain and where the danger of falling off the edge of that is so dangerous, though the little eaglet is, is so uncomfortable. But then Mother Eagle comes in. And Mother Eagle, all the time, Mother Eagle has this time of planning and knowing and realizing the little eaglet would come to a time where things would need to change because the little eaglet would never, ever find its divine purpose unless it changed. Unless things, if things remained the same, that little eaglet would never, ever be able to enter in to the divine purpose that she had been created to be. And I'm here to tell you that about your life. Unless God has allowed things to get uncomfortable, unless God has called you to kind of stand up on the edge of your nest, you would never, you think it's against you, but God's going to use it for you. If you will allow God to work and move in this and trust God during this process, what seems to be really horrible at this time is going to all of a sudden take a massive change and you're going to find what you was really created to do and what you was really created to be. 
And that little eaglet then stands on side of that desk, and Mother Eagle comes in. And Mother Eagle knows now it's time for the different season because unless that little eaglet finds its wings, it will never find its destiny. Unless that little eaglet finds its wings, it will never be able to be cared, cared for. Unless that little eaglet finds its wings. So that little eaglet, when Mother Eagle swoops in, as she comes in, little eaglet searching for that comfortable place again leaps upon its mother's back because there on its mother's back is that soft feathers. At that moment, mother eagle began to take that little eaglet and began to climb high into the clouds. She climbs high into the clouds because she knows it's in for training. I'm going to tell you what, training's rough. Some of you have already reached that stage, and it's tough. Man, you feel like you're falling. You feel like you're going to crash, but you hold on, honey. God's got you. Amen. And so as Mother Eaglet climbed into the clouds, and then she would just begin to tilt her little wings. When she tilts her wings, the little eaglet falls off. And then little eaglet, all this screaming going on, all this flapping going on, all this flopping going on. He's never had wings, never had air underneath his wings before. And then all of a sudden, what little eaglet looks and sees as, as absolute death coming, as that ground is approaching, that, uh, that, as that distance is taken care of in that fall, all of a sudden, right before little eaglet crashes the ground, here comes Mother Eagle, and she swoops little eaglet up on her back again and begins to soar. That's why the back Bible says, though you fall, though he falls, he will not be utterly cast down for the Lord swoops him up or the Lord picks him up with his hand. I don't know about you, but there's a lot of people here that know what it is to be swooped up by God and lifted up by God right at the moment. It seemed like sudden crash and death was approaching. And so Mother Eagle, then again, once she picks up little eagle high into the cloud, she goes again and the process is done over and over again until finally little eagle, eaglet begins to find what it is to put air under his wings and find what it is to soar. And all of a sudden, little eaglet finally realizes what I was created to be. And then he becomes one of the most magnificent creatures that God has put on planet Earth as he began to soar. But there is also a sad note that has to, I have to mention too. There are some that refuse to fly. There are those that refuse to go. The fear, of the, the fear of the air and the fear of falling is so extreme to where that that little eaglet never, ever finds her wings. After Mama Eagle tries many, many times, Mama Eagle knows that unless he finds his wings, he'll never do what he was created to be. So Mother Eagle starts the last approach. She takes little eaglet on her wings and she starts high into the clouds again. As, little mother, as Mother Eagle takes Little Eagle high into the clouds, she knows this is the last time I will ever drop this one. And so she finally comes to that place and she drops him for the last time. And that time, if Little Eaglet finds its wings, it will find its destiny. But if that Little Eagle refuses to fly, Mama can't pick him up. Mama knows he will never, ever learn. He will never, ever grow into his destiny. He will never, ever be. And Little Eaglet finds its absolute death as it crashes into the rock below. So I'm telling you what, although it's a fearful thing, it's also a wonderful thing. It's, and that's what happens, is happening in a lot of our lives. God's bringing change and the change that God's bringing. In the Bible, it says in Exodus chapter 19, verse 6, it says, you have seen what I did to the Egyptians, God said. You know how I carried you on eagles' wings. And I want you to know there's not one of us here that have not experienced that from time to time in our life. We know what it is to be picked up on eagles' wings by God. How I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. The purpose of your wings, the purpose of your flight, the purpose that you were created and put on planet Earth to do is to find your place in God. Because there's no one else in all the world that can, that can demonstrate God the way God has has revealed himself inside of you. And so it's of vital importance for you to find your destiny. It's of vital importance. So that's what God's in the process of doing. So this is not a bad season. This is really a good season. Somebody say, praise God for the glory of God. Now, <clears throat> In Mark chapter 2, verse 22, Jesus dealt with a situation very similar to what we've been talking about with the eagle. He said, and who would pour, and who would pour flesh, new wine into an old wineskin? Eventually, the wine will ferment and make the wineskin burst, losing everything. 
The wine will be spilled and the wineskin ruined. Instead, new wine is always poured into new wineskins. The process of what we're you praying, we're, all, we're praying for that new wine. That's what's promised us in the Word of God. New wine, speaking of rejoicing and joy. What God's wanting to do in your life, the end result is going to bring rejoicing and much joy. But God can't pour it in until he first builds that new wineskin. What the process of God is doing is in the process of your life of restructuring, of shouldering, shouldering up, of building strength in your life that will be able to hold that new wine that God wants to pour in. God's not a wasteful God, and God knows that if he tries to put something wonderful into your life without shoring you up first to be able to handle it, it will never be a benefit to you. In fact, it could possibly even end up being a curse. We've got to let God build the wineskins. The wineskin is the first thing that we allow God to do us by faith. It's not what we've prayed for, but it's what's going to hold what we prayed for. It's not what we're believing for, but it's what's going to hold what we're believing for. It's what's going to take care of what we're believing for, but God can't give us what we're believing for until he first builds the structure and prepares for that. Amen. For, for example, people, people that, that go through uh, emergency situations a lot, and I've certainly been in that line, but go through emergency situations, we, 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 we're prone to have just these, these bursts of prayer in our life. Something wrong, then I need people to pray with me, and I need a burst of prayer. Without developing a consistent prayer life. And it never fails. If you're trying to live on God's miracles without building something consistent in your life, you are always having to be believing God for a miracle because the enemy will always be attacking you. God wants to build a structure that can hold his miracle that God's going to do for you. So whatever it is, it starts with building a structure. That's why we don't, we don't, we say, oh man, things are not working out. Well, what is God doing in your life? And if you begin to look, you'll find out that that miracle that you're praying for, maybe God's dealing with you about your prayer life. Maybe God's dealing with you about worshiping him. Maybe God's dealing with you about regular church attendance. Maybe God is dealing with you on things that will structure. And you don't understand, that's the first prerequisite for the miracle. God is first getting your life together so you will be able to help and hold that miracle that God's going to do for you. A lot of times people, they'll say, I just need a miracle in my marriage. And they never allow God to shoulder up that. Listen, you can call her honey today, but you'll be calling the enemy tomorrow if you don't get a structure built in your life. You've got to realize God has to rework our life. I say rework our life. God, we have to allow God to rework our lives. And God, by his holy, we will never and we'll always be desperate. Do you want to live desperate all your life? We'll always be desperate. We'll always be there. There's some people, when they walk in this church, they're desperate all the time. They go from disaster to disaster to disaster. Let me tell you what, that's okay. I love people like that, but I like to run around with some eagles, those that's learned to take the wings and to fly for the glory of God. And it's not always a sad story, but there's miracles that God is working in the midst of their life. Now, if you're going through a problem, don't, don't, we all have problems. But what I'm talking about, there will be a constant flow of problems in your life unless you allow God. And then the thing about it, if you will allow God to build the structure into your life, build the disciplines into your life, if you will allow God to build a prayer life, if you'll allow God to build word knowledge into your life, somebody says, you know what? I don't understand. Man, I'm believing God. I really need a miracle in my marriage. And when I pray, God just keeps dealing with me about reading the Word. I don't understand what God's doing. You don't understand. God is building a structure that's going to end up saving your marriage. It's not going to just produce a salvation one time. It's going to produce a happy marriage, a blessed marriage, a great marriage for the glory of God. You've got to let God build a structure. So when God, by His Holy Spirit, begins to deal with you, you've got to say yes. And this is the year to say yes. Now, in the process of wineskins, wineskins are different. We have to allow God to train our thinking. 
We have to allow God to help us to think differently, to even talk differently, to believe different. I mean, I know we always want to hold on to, the, to, to some kind of image that we have of ourselves. Let me tell you, do away with that image you got of yourself and develop a Jesus image inside your life, and you'll find out God can do so much with that. God, God is bringing about change in all of our life. You know, I just determined I'm an old guy, but I tell you what, this dog is not too old to learn some new tricks. If it will bless my life, if it will help me, if it'll help me to get better, if it'll help me have a better marriage, if it'll help me have a better life, if it'll help me to be a better person, if it'll help me to be a better whatever it is, then I am ready to learn. Just show me the show me the routine. I put the right little piece of crumb because I will learn some new tricks if it will bless my life for the glory of God. Amen. So we have to learn and we have to grow. We have to, it may mean that I have to learn to do life in a brand new way. We all do life. Every one of us do life. But what happens is we, we, we learn to do life in the path of least resistance. Each one of us have learned how to do life in the pathway of least resistance. But I'm going to tell you what, the natural man is enmity or enemy with God. If you're doing what's easy in your life, it's not going to be long, honey. You're going to be running for your life. Because what comes easy, you've got to learn to be a trout and to swim upstream. You've got to learn to go against the flow. No matter what the flow of this world is trying to put you, you've got to say, I'm going to go against this flow. I'm going to be a different kind of person for the glory of God. So if I'm going to build the type, that, that's why people that are highly blessed people, they're, they don't fit the mode of everybody else. They have learned I'm an individual and I'm not going to let the fear of people cause me to be like everybody else. I'm going to be like God has made me. I guess the richest person that I'd ever been around, uh, I, I respected him so highly. And uh, I respected the way that he made his money. I respected the way he used his money. And I don't know how many times as friends he would look across that desk and he'd say, Jerry, everything I have is a gift from God. He said, what I do, I just use this gift for God's glory. And I do as God tells me. I'm going to tell you what, God has a place for every one of us. But we've got to be willing to allow God to develop us in a new way. I, God wants me to readjust my priorities. God wants me to do some things that are uncomfortable. Boy, when I go up and ask somebody and say, hey, you want to welcome somebody? Will you stand and greet somebody? Or say, I'm not comfortable with that. Honey, that's where God is all in our life. That's where God is always. Where he's always bringing us into those areas of change that are uncomfortable. We feel uneasy. But if I go with what's easy, I'm going to never do anything for Jesus. But if I want to realize that God's made me to fly high in the sky, if I want some wings that'll carry me up, I'm going to look at the uncomfortable and say, I can handle it through the grace of God. I can't do anything, but God in me can do everything for the glory of the Lord. Amen. All right. In Luke chapter 10, 20, it says, don't rejoice that demons are saved. That's what we want. We, I, I want to just rejoice over the miracles. I just want to tell you what God told me. I mean, I just, I mean that. But that's not what God told me. I can't allow my mind to stay there. What I have to wrap my mind around is that the, I'm a child of God. I've got to wrap it around. I'm a, I'm a citizen of a new kingdom. I've got to wrap my mind around the right things. What God's telling us there, there we can have, we can live the wrong type of priorities. You're not chasing miracles. Miracles are to be chasing you for the glory of God. You're not one that's just uh, looking at the wrong things. You're the one that's thinking about the right things. And, and uh, praise God. We've got to stop living in just what comes natural. We've got to readjust. What the Lord kind of spoke to my heart is this. To me being the spiritual me that God has called me to be. That's what my attention's got to be on. I've got to, I've got to become the spiritual me that God's called me to be. I've got to become that. You have too. If this is going to be a year that's going to move things, that God's going to be able to move in your life and move dramatic, you've got to become the spiritual me that God's called. You've got to quit putting off the things that you know God is putting and wanting to deal with your life about. You've got to quit putting off. You've got to take it. This is the year 2019. It's the year to step up. Somebody say step up. It is the year to step up. 
It's the year to make a step up in my life and to change. Now, there are those in the Bible, that people, people that are highly successful in the Lord, they just have a different way of thinking. They don't think like the general population. Now, you can find that different kind of thinking in the life of David just so easy. King David, the Lord said, you think right, David. He said, in fact, you're a man after my own heart. That's what God said. God said, David, because you think. See, David thought different than the people that was around him. That's why he, David even thought different than his wife. That's why she laughed at him when he danced, but he didn't care who laughed at him. He said, I'm going to dance before the Lord. He, he knew who it was that was going to make his life. And, uh, and so, David, even, even in fact, in fact, the day that David walked out of the city. See, David knew what it was to handle good times and hard times. There's not a person here today that, that you don't have to learn how to handle hard times and good times. You have to learn to handle both. I've watched some people that could not handle bad times. They crash every time a bad time came. Then I've watched, those, watched some people that couldn't handle good times. I've watched some people that, that God didn't keep a problem in your life. You couldn't live for Jesus. <laughs> Guess what? You're going to have the rest of your life. <laughs> you got problems in your life. Because unless problems are there, some people can't live for Jesus. But, but the only way you can, you develop a structure in your life of thinking about God right, believing about God right, responding right, responding as the right kind of person. Now, in Psalms 51.10, notice, this is the different thinking that David had. When, when, when David could have been thinking about, you know what, I killed a giant. But notice where his heart is at. He said, Lord, create in me a clean heart. Have you, I, I don't know about you, but see, that's David's cry, a clean heart. Now, there's been times when my heart wasn't clean. I know what it is, get a clean heart. Yesterday, Lane and I had a little discussion. In the midst of discussion, my heart wasn't like the heart it was before that discussion. (laughs) And so, immediately, if I was going to chase God, I had to change. I had, to, I had to be willing. I had to be willing, number one, is to admit it to God. God, I was wrong. I was, I was totally wrong in me. And then number two, I had to be willing to admit it. Don't tell Elaine, but I was supposed to admit it to her. <laughs> because, see, God, see, if my heart is wanting to be clean. And then, then notice what he said. He said, put a right spirit. Have you ever been around somebody with the wrong spirit? Have you ever had a wrong spirit? <laughs> have, you, have you ever had a wrong spirit, had an angry spirit, an upset spirit, a depressed spirit, a discouraged spirit? But David, David knew that the greatest thing that he could have was to have a right spirit. And so David fought for that. Now, David was certainly done wrong in so many ways of life. He was done wrong by his family. He was done wrong by his friends. He was done wrong by the person that he admired. He was done wrong by his mentor. David was attacked and assaulted by so many. And so that's why David's thinking always had to be, God, you've got to keep my heart clean. You've got to keep me a right spirit. Because, God, if I get to be a wrong, if if my spirit's not right. See, David had that right spirit when he left out of Jerusalem that day, when they had taken his kingdom. He lost his kingdom. He lost his throne. He lost his family. He lost everything that David held dear. That day he walked out of that. What he said was, he said, Lord. And and as David was walking out, they was running along the wall, yelling horrible names at him. They was uh, making mocking him, laughing at him. But David walking along, when he walked out of that city, he said, Lord, if I find favor in your heart, If I can keep my heart right, God, you will bring me back. We fail to understand. God's the only one that has the power to restore to us what the enemy has tried to take away. I believe the Holy Spirit has touched our life today. I believe that the words that were spoken, I believe God is dealing with us. And for many of us, maybe we need to make some things right with God. Maybe there's some areas of our life that we need to surrender to Him. 
Maybe there's some things that the Holy Spirit is asking us to come over or come out of. Can I pray with you? Can I pray with you and ask God to forgive us? Can I pray with you and ask God to help us to surrender those areas of our life? Can I pray with you and ask God to help us to be able to change things through His power, to be able to live differently, talk differently, think differently, and be different? God can help us do that. That's all in the areas of God's strength and His power is to help us live a victorious life. Let's pray. Would you pray and say, Father, forgive me for my sin. Forgive me for my failure. And Lord, I ask you to come in my life. And Lord, right here today, I ask you, God, that you would be Lord of my life. And Lord, in the issues of my life that I need to surrender to you, the areas of fear and discouragement, the things that's caused me to be depressed and those things that's hit hard on me or those things that's tried to come into my life and overcome my life, Lord, I come today to surrender them to you. I know that you're able, God, to free me, to help me. And Lord, I surrender them in Jesus' name to you. And now, Lord, I ask you for your grace and for your strength to overcome. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Call that number on the bottom of the screen. Will you call us and let us hear from you? Will you let us be a part of your support team? Let us be a part of that team that's going to be praying with you and standing with you and believing God with you. And also on the website, let us hear of your prayer request. God bless you. And I pray that this week will be the strongest week in the Lord you've ever had. Look forward to it next week. God bless you. Hi, I'm Pastor Jerry Abel. Thanks for watching Victory today. Victory is a church that's all about people, all about excitement, and all about what God's doing in your life. We want to invite you back to watch each week for another exciting time together. To find out more about Victory, give us a call and let us know how we can be a part of your family. God bless you and thank you for watching the program today. We're excited to introduce the all-new Victory Church app, now available on the Apple App Store and the Android market for your smartphone and tablet. Get church information and download free content from Victory. Don't miss a service. Listen to past week's messages on the go, new after each service in the Camden and El Dorado campuses. Access Victory TV on demand and watch all the exciting video series taught by Pastor Jerry and the Victory Pastoral Team. Send a confidential prayer request and let the Victory Prayer Ministers believe God with you for your miracle and take advantage of our most convenient way to give with a secure victory giving section where you can choose from many easy ways to give your tithes or sow into specific ministries of the church at your convenience right from the palm of your hand it's all at your fingertips on the new victory church app download for free today simply go to the apple app store or the android marketplace right on your smartphone or tablet and search for the victory church arkansas and click on the victory logo